today in the our sets club, we have a Pua Pakola, who's an investigator at Lieber, and who's going to tell us about um, the RF um, framework for, for visibility that he, you, you have a preprint from 2015, no? About it. Yeah, the, yeah, the preprint, we do have a preprint, but mm -hmm. uh, it's not quite up to date. We prefer just the documentation than the preprint itself. All okay. right. We want cool. to make a new version and submit soon. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, go ahead. All right, cool. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to present here. And so I would like to, to share with you guys this, uh, this tool and we developed in during my postdoc in San Diego. And it's called RF and stands for Reproducibility Framework. And it's a minimalist framework for reproducible computation. Uh, so this is the outline. What is RF? What are the features, the principles, uses and examples, limitations and ongoing work? Okay, so what is RF? So RF is a methodology and the software to organize computational workflows in a logical structure of files and directories and ensure that computations are reproducible and do version control of code documentation, data and computation results. And the, and the idea is that RF is minimalist by design, so it's very easy to learn and use. There are some, there are many other tools that do that, right? Do reproducible computational workflows, but they require to learn a complicated syntax and it's kind of difficult to get into that. And we want to, to do something completely simple, so it's very easy to adopt. And, Okay, so what RF is not? So RF is not a job schedule system. And there are very good ones like SGEs, Learn. RF is not that, but RF works with those and interacts with those tools. And also RF is not a full featured work workflow management tool like SnakeMake, a workflow definition language, common workflow language but also it works well with them. Okay, so then what are the features of RF? So the uh, RF has a directory structure that reflects dependencies among computations. That will be clear in the example. And we separate human written content from machine generated content for reproducibility. So in this way, a human never messes with, uh, with something that was generated by a computer. And so also we do version control of code data and computational results. And we use Git for version control of code and documentation. And we use Git Annex for the large files. So Git Annex is an extension to Git that allows to store large files uh, in a Git repository. And it uses symbolic links to do that. So it puts, uh, it creates an annex and which is a subdirectory and puts the large file in the annex and then puts a symbolic link to that file and lets Git manage that symbolic link. So we use that for the large files, like for example, BUM files and, and any large files that are generated. And so, so RF is compatible with other workflow tools. So you can call SnakeMake inside of RF, for example, in other tools as well. And also it supports uh, code execution containers and uh, out of the box. It already has Docker support and 
we are working on singularity support now. Okay, so the principles. So this slide is pretty much what RF is. It's really minimalist. And if you understand this slide, you, you can start working with it and there's nothing else. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, okay, so then, and again, the directory structure reflects computational workflow. So each step in the workflow gets its own directory. Directories are nested according to dependencies. And if there are more dependencies than the parent directory, they are listed as symbolic links in this subdirectory underscore age that. Okay. And then we separate uh, human directories and machine directories. So a directory named underscore age contains the code and documentation for the step in, for a step in the workflow. In the directory named underscore M contains the output when the code in age is executed. And another principle is the run scripts. A script simply named run that resides inside the underscore age directory is supposed to be called without arguments. And why to be called without, without arguments? To be reproducible. So we just call run and the script itself will contain all the parameters that need to be used in programs. And when we call run without arguments, it will generate the contents of the underscore in directive. And uh, so, Here's an example to make it clear. And uh, so let's say we have this very simple workflow here in which we download the book from the Gutenberg project. We count words from this book, we count lines and count characters. So how do we do this with RF? So first we have a parent directory called download book. This directory has two folders, underscore age, underscore m. Underscore age will have a script that downloads the book. And the result, the book itself, will be stored in the underscore in folder. And then under this parent directory, download book, we have three other directories. Each one represents a different step in the computational workflow. So then we have count characters, count lines, and count words. Each of these has two directories, underscore age and underscore m. Underscore age is the human directory then to have uh, code and documentation to perform this step that's counting characters. And underscore m will contain the result of execution. Okay, so, so then for example, in this example, uh, in the parent directory, download book underscore age run, we have this command here to get one book from Gutenberg project. It's just a wget program, a wget call, right? So then it stores the output in this uh, file called book text that goes to directory underscore n. And then under that, when we, in the count characters folder, we have the count characters underscore age run. So it will do wc minus c dot dot dot, dot m book and direct the output to characters text. And same for lines and words. So I'll share, uh, I'll share another, okay. So then here are some comments some RF comments. RF run calls the run script in one directory. RF run minus R calls the run script recursively in all subdirectories of that directory. RF status so shows the status of execution. RF drop drops the M folder. So if you need to recompute again, you can call drop. In RF drop minus R drops all the 
and folders recursively. Okay, so I'm gonna share another screen to do a live demo for this example. Okay, so here we go. Uh, can you see my shell? Is, is the font size okay? Can you increase it a little bit, please? Yes. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Okay. So here we are. We have, we are in this folder test RF and we have this download book, right? So then let's go in there. So, so first I'll, I'll do RF status. And then it will show a directory three. And uh, since the current folder has no underscore age folder, that's okay. And then the download book has Download book is ready to run, it means it has an underscore age folder with a run script inside. And all the other subfolders are ready to run. So let's go inside the download book. So you see here the directories, it has the underscore age and it has subdirectories, count characters, count lines, count fields. And then in age, we have this run script. And one script is just this wget. Oh, one second. I, I got them. I'll change it. One second. Okay. Uh, so here's the oh, here's the run script. Uh, so I'm gonna run it now. So to run, we do rf run dot dot is the current directory. So then it's it starts running. So it calls the run script. So first it creates the underscore m directory goes inside that and then calls the run script that's in the underscore age directory. And then, uh, and then the output is generated in underscore m. So here we go. So here's the output, which is the book. And this is the adventures of Tom Sawyer downloaded from project. Good to bad. Okay, so now we go to count words. I need to edit this script. I'm guessing um, RF status will use the success file that was created to know that. Yes. Like exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'll do RF status again. Uh, RF status. Oh, oh no. And so, and one more. RF status. So then the download book's done. And because the file success is not present in the underscore name folder, the other three are not done yet, they're ready to run. Okay, so we can do uh, download book word, count words, RF run, RF status. So it's, it run, right, generate the M, and the, the output word, the output file is just this, saying there are 70,000 
73,000 some words. And then if you go back a couple levels, uh, stop this. Then the words is done, the other two are not done yet. And uh, let me edit the, the other one scripts. Um, Okay, now we are going to do an F run minus R dot. So it will run recursively all the folders then and that need to be run. So then it start it, it run count characters and count lines. If you do RF status, we have this. So, so then it's all done. And okay, that's the, these are the basic commands. Let me switch um, to. Does RF run also like do like its status or something? Or why are you, because you have here um, like some git error messages. Oh yes, uh, I did not get into the git part yet. I will, I'll mm wait. -hmm. I'll go to that next in the next couple of days. Okay, let me switch to the presentation. And so these are the basic comments. Basically, run the scripts and look at status and then delete the info. And now, uh, the RF and Git comments. So RF works together with Git to, to, to do version control, right? So first, uh, we want to initialize a repository in an RF project. And then we can do commits to, to Git. And, and then let's say, when the project is in nice state and then we submit that paper, we can, to a journal, we can do a commit and then tag that commit, like paper submitted to Nature Neuroscience. And then and we can always bring the whole, uh, the whole directory tree to that state where it was when we submitted the paper. And I'll switch to the command line to show some examples. Okay. Is this, can you see my screen, the command line? Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna drop and drop all the end folders. And so then initialize repository. It worked, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's okay as well. And so. Okay. So then now you can commit. Uh, RF commit. Uh, let's see that. RF commit. Uh, compute. Uh, Okay, so it committed the, it created a commit in Git, so you can do Git commands in that too, so Git log. So there's one commit here. Uh, and I have status. Uh, this stuff is not run yet, so we can run. I'll introduce a bug on purpose in one of the scripts just to, Illustrate. Uh, let's put WC minus J, which doesn't exist, just create a bug. And I'll do a RF run minus R to run everything else. So then there was an error in. The count lines as expected. So then I have status. So then I have status here says incomplete because it has a M folder, but it's not, it doesn't have the success file. So it's not completed execution. And we can still commit that. Let's do a commit. Run count. Okay, so it it committed uh, everything there. Uh, okay, now, so when we look at the underscore M, we can see that the book is a symbolic link to the annex. So it's being managed by Git annex. Everything that's inside the underscore M are managed by Git annex, but you can still see the content like with the book. Okay, so and then git log. And here is the here there are two commits, right? If we want, we can do git checkout. Ah, so so I have status. The status is like this now, right? Everything is done. Yeah. Except these count lines. So let's go and fix the count lines. Count lines H WC minus L. And inside count lines, we do rf dot dot, so it will delete the end folder. And then we see rf status. Count lines is ready to run. And then we do rf run 
like Chrissy dot and then count lines is done now. And you can do a new commit. Pixel count. So now it committed only what it needed to commit this, what changed from the previous version. So we have here uh, the, um, the status, it, it all run and git log, the commit. Okay, so then uh, if I want to go back to a state and see what was, what was the bug again with count lines, right? So then we can do git checkout. And then we do our status. So it went back to the state it was when we did that commit. So all the all the code and all the data in that subfolder download book is now at the state it was when we did the commit. And, and now we can go back to, to where we are. Oh, I need to check out master. Yeah, now, now it's back to back to them with all the computations now. And then, so then let me switch to the other screen. So then with that, we can, um, with that we can use a uh, Git. We can work with data and uh, we we can work with code and data with Git as if as if we were working with code, just like in a normal development, uh, just, just like in normal software development. We can create Git branches. We can share. Uh, we can push things to the repository, clone things, just what Git does, right? But also with um, intermediate results, other results of execution there too. Okay, uh, so RF and Jupyter notebooks. I, I guess you guys are familiar with Jupyter notebooks already, right? Or should I say something about Jupyter? Um, KJ has. Uh, shown them to us a little bit um, in the past, but um, I don't think a lot of us actively use them. Right, okay. So so we like Jupyter Notebooks a lot. Um, as Canon have showed, the, it allows us to do computation on the web browser, right? And, and then run stuff on a server and and we can call Python or R or any other, or, or the languages that are supported, but we usually use Python and R in Jupyter note, in notebooks. And then it has Markdown support and it is, it is quite nice, right? And so we, uh, we integrate RF with Jupyter Notebooks. So the idea is that you, you put your notebook inside the human folder underscore age and you work with it interactively. So when you're done, you press save or to save the notebook. And you run this one script here that's listed here in my screen 
to recompute the notebook and generate HTML and PDF in the underscore M folder. So this way, the, the notebook becomes reproducible. So you just have to run it again. Um, but this time, not interactively. You have to run it with this Jupyter and be convert. So it will like, compile your notebook, not compile, it will run your notebook and generate an HTML and PDF uh, that's static content. And I have an example of a Jupyter notebook from a, from a single cell project. Let me show you. So this is one, one Jupyter notebook that was already converted to HTML. So this is uh, Python and use SCAMPY and, and this SCAMPY is a single cell package. We use that to do um, UMAP and custom in this project. So this was done with RF as well. So when we run, we run first this inside the age folder. When we are satisfied, we we run the run script to generate the HTML. So here is just show an example. And okay, so um. So this is RF with Jupyter. We also run RF in Gypsy together with SnakeMake. So SnakeMake is Snake Make's really nice to 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 do uh, to to call programs for multiple files. For example, when we are mapping uh, RNA seq reads or whatever you're doing. Uh, Snake makes a very nice way to to do that to call programs. It has some syntax to learn, and but it's very good, right? And we we use Snake Make inside RF, so we 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 make a Snake file and call it run and put it inside the age folder, and then this first line of uh, this first line, the snake make file, and the snake file uh, says what what to do. Right in this case, it has the Q sub command. We using Gypsy to request uh, nodes with with this much free memory, this much file size, and and that's pretty much it. And then the the snake make code goes here. I can show the I can show the real scripts and the real stuff. I think so. Thank you. 
Uh, okay, let's see the share. Share screen. Uh, okay, can you see the screen? So this is where uh, this snake make scripting gypsy is. Um, There are a couple of scripts uh, yeah, so this one is the only we run with snake make and the run script looks like this uh, so first this this first line tells snake make to submit stuff to to QSub in Gypsy and then and uh, here's the syntax so, so where we look at uh, where we look at the BAM files to, to look at, it's, it's like makes a mix of Python and shell common, but it's useful. It's useful. You don't need to use that. You can use whatever script you want. We chose to use make me. And this, this rule calls the problem feature counts with a couple options. Controlled by snake inside Earth. Okay, so then this is, this is snake making gypsy. No, I mean RF in gypsy. And uh, let me show one more thing. So let's see how it works. So this is the. Um, we can't see your screen right now. Ah, okay. So let me share it. This one. Okay, so this is the, for the Caldate paper, the EQTL analysis subfolder, we all, we did it on RF. So this is the RF status of it all day. And so for example, we do, uh, for, we separated in African-American only and then European only and all together. And for axons, genes, junction. And this is the fast QTL pipeline that is run by, that's, it's similar to GTEx, right? So then we have several steps done with RF as well. Thank you. Uh, and this is the RF status. So then, This show a real life project, how it looks like. It's a lot of files and directories and other branches. Uh, I'll go back to the previous. <clears throat> so in that big directory, um, I guess you don't really use the um, uh, RF run dash R, the recursive option that much. Um, or like, will you need to use like 
numbers in directory names to control the order in which in which they are run. Right. So that's because the example the the book example was like from a single step you got had three dependencies that yeah the yeah, order yeah. of the dependencies didn't really matter right yeah so the when there are more dependencies than just the parent child dependency in the trees you need to put symbolic links mm -hmm. in the underscore age that directory so then you put symbolic links to the to to the folders that folder depends on. So then this way, RF run will know the correct order of execution. Mm -hmm. And if um, you don't put that, it will only use the, the parent-child relationship to, to define dependencies. So you do you define that all manually or is there like tools within RF to like help you like I don't know, map that dependency, or do you have to like go through and make all those links yourself? That's a good question. Uh, we do manually now, but it's very possible to do automatically. Like if you run it once and then you detect what files were used and stuff, you can use that to annotate uh, the dependencies. Yeah, that's very good. And also one point about what Leo was saying that, um, uh, about running the whole thing with minus R or just running one piece at a time. Uh, so in practice, when we are developing a pipeline, we run a lot of things one piece at a time. So some, some things are, uh, some things are basic right there in the foundation of a pipeline, like mapping stuff to the genome, counting reads and stuff like that. This can be done uh, once and this is the foundation of a project, right? And then by other stuff like plots and more downstream analysis, they usually need to be done multiple times in, interactive, in an interactive way. So then it's good to be able to run RF for just one subfolder and then run again, run again until we are satisfied with the result. So that's the difference between specifying all the pipeline up front versus being able to build it on the fly as we go. And RF is good for it allows us to add stuff to it without changing any syntax and, and without changing the Like in snake make, for example, we have to change the snake file that specifies the whole build. We don't need to do that. We just add a subfolder to RF and it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like <clears throat> the snake make example there, like um, you're really defining like um, a small snake make pipeline that has a single like input channel and output stream, right? Yes. I mean, I don't know if I'm using the right word snake. Right. Um, but like, for example, like something like uh, Speakeasy, right? Which is our next flow uh, pipeline uh, that has a lot of like steps. That one you wouldn't really, <clears throat> um, well, I guess if you use it with RF, it would be like RF run Speakeasy. And then like, yeah. after that, like you lose other things, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's one thing too. So RF can be, uh, and RF doesn't stay in the way of other workflow tools. So if you want to use the directory structure of RF together with another workflow tool, you can do that in two ways. One way is to, to just call, to just use the run script to call the other tool, like we did with this small snake make example. And there's another way uh, that I didn't put here, but there's another way that you can instruct a, a subdirector of RF to be, a, to be just a passive container for the parent. So then if you put the keyword yield instead of, if you create an empty file called yield instead of run, 
it would not do anything if the underscore m directory and it will leave it to the parent. So then you can put a big snake mix script in the parent controlling uh, a lot of subfolders and a lot of the subfolders. And then in this way, RF gives, uh, gives way to snake make to control the subfolder. And also in this way, you can use the, the directory structure logic of RF and still use another tool like snake make. Can you tell RF to ignore a subdirectory? So for example, when we run TWAS, like that creates like one directory per gene. Uh -huh. um, and like, uh, or one directory per X and et cetera. So that's like a lot of directories. Um, right. And like, um, let's say you, you don't want RF to be looking inside of those thousands of small directories to see if they have an underscore age, underscore M success, et cetera. Can yeah. So it to be like, don't, don't look there. Like, <laughs> yeah. So if it doesn't have an underscore age, it will be ignored by RF. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, usually for, for TWAS, when we run RF in TWAS, we put the results inside the M, right? This one, one directory per gene, those would be inside the M folder. So mm -hmm. RF will not see it. It will, it will not try to run it because it's already inside the, the M folder. And... Let's see if there's more. Okay, so limitations. Currently, we have this rule that the underscore age is managed by, managed by Git and M by Git and X. This is too rigid. So sometimes we want to, to allow some small files in M to be in Git so we can see it more easily and see it in GitHub and because GitHub does not support it and X. So we have to do Zenodo and other stuff to, to be able to, to see the large files. And sometimes we have large files in the age. It's rare, but it's possible. And we want them to be managed by Git and X to, because it's really slow to manage a large file with Git. So the next, this is simple to fix. We, we just need to, add some rules, that's not a hard limitation. It's something you just need to, to add some stuff to the software. Okay, and then what, what we are doing now. So, so RF supports containerized execution out of the box. It's simple, you just need to call Docker run or Singularity run uh, from your run script. But that's not that that's not super easy because you have to mount directories and 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 prepare a little bit to, to call the to call singularity or docker. And we want to make it easier. So we're working on it now some convenience scripts to to call singularity. We like singularity much better than Docker because Docker kind of requires you to give root access to Docker and to the images you're downloading. It's not safe, right? And the Gypsy people also use Singularity. I think it's a good thing. So we are working now on um, adding some convenience scripts to use Singularity from RF. And the, there's a preprint, but we are making a new version and writing better and submit it. That's the plan. And uh, in summary, RF is minimalist and easy to use system for reproducible computation. It's actually easy to use and uh, we use it all the time in, in our group. We, we use it a lot. And uh, in the directory structure helps organize projects. It's this part is I like it a lot. So we see, so we go to a subdirectory and we do a PWD, it says 
it basically says what what is the pipeline that was run until you get to that point, right? So you map reads and you do feature counts and whatever it is, it, it will be reflected in the directory in the path so far to where you are. So it helps to know what was done with the data in a simple way. And as I was saying before, I responded to Leo's question, it helps build pipelines on the fly. You just, you just add a new folder to, and to do more analysis or you change things. And, and with version control, you can come back to a state where it was when you submitted the paper, for example, and, yeah, and, and things like that. And thanks to the people who participated in development and the people who are using it and testing. Um, and that's it, thank you. Awesome. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, like one of them is um, we're trying to organize our projects in one way where we have a code directory and a process data directory, a raw data directory. So <clears throat> could we have inside of code, let's say the, the book um, code that you, the example that you made, right. and then tell RF to use, um, to, um, Write the underscore eight uh, underscore m directories inside of the process data. So can we use like maybe a soft link, essentially like writes the underscore m in in a, in a separate. Um, uh, so you want to separate the raw data that turns out of sequencing machine from all the processed data. I, you know, okay. like I want to make it easy to. Um, to quantify how much data we have that is processed, how much that it, that it is raw that we need to back up. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah, so like, I mean, I imagine I can I could manually create the, a soft link for the underscore M um, directory and put it in the process data. But like, I don't know if there's maybe another way to, to try to do this with RF. Yeah, so in, what we do in our uh, analysis projects, we call one subfolder and input. And in this input, we put just the raw data. Also using the underscore age and underscore n idea. Mm -hmm. We call it input, we can call it raw data. Mm -hmm. It's just another subfolder that says very, says explicitly that this is raw data. And then another subfolder, we call it analysis. And then all the processing goes in there. Mm. So they are separated. But we still keep the underscore M and underscore age to separate the, the human generated code versus the computer generated content mm. for reproducibility. Just as like an added of what I've been doing, I normally link the like raw, raw data for different projects. So it's still in the input, but I make a new folder that says counts and I'm not copying the hard data into that. I'm linking it from the original source mm. so that we, in our cluster, we've got the counts in a folder and that stays there. And then if I'm using it for a specific project or if I, I got four projects that are using that count, they're in different directories and they're all in the input. They all say count. So I know exactly what it is. And it's just a link from that main raw mm -hmm. input. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, the log files are the no, uh, no, what is it, dot no, HUP, I think. No help. Uh, no help. Is that no where the log files help. get saved? I don't know. No help out. This one. Uh -huh, yeah. So uh, no help is a, a Unix command to to run stuff in background 
and save the standard output and standard error to this file, no help out. Mm -hmm. And if you, um, and this is good if you, if you want to run stuff in background and you have to leave the terminal, mm -hmm. it never interrupts the process. So, so if you, sometimes depending on the situation, if you kill the terminal, you can kill the original process as well. Mm -hmm. And in this way, if it, it doesn't happen, it just, just runs it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's where you automatically save the log files, right, with RF? And not necessarily, that is, mm. we, that's how we do, but we can save more log files, for example, using snake make one log file per sample mm. and do a, a RNC processing. Mm -hmm. And you have all the freedom of a script that you can put in run, right? Yeah. yeah. But like, I thought that like, UC admins didn't like using the no hub um, um, because it like some grid, son of grid engine doesn't detect that well. But like, um, do you have problems when you piece up with RF? Say again, sir. You know, you know, uh, using no hub doesn't create problems when you queue sub. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, we didn't have any problems with. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. using snake making side RF to call Q sub mm -hmm. a lot in Gypsy. And sometimes we don't use snake make, we just call mm -hmm. Q sub in we just call Q sub with for loop in a bash script to mm -hmm. works, works as well. All right, cool. Ah, I forgot one thing. Uh, oh man, I forgot to put in the presentation. It's let me write here in the chat. And um, it's in GitHub. You can install and you can download and install and test. Mm. Let me put the GitHub. I put it on the zoo, on the um, on the email now. I don't know. I would yeah. I can send an email, but I'm not sure they. Oh, no. I mean the yeah, and I put it on Slack. The the link to your GitHub. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll share this screen here. GitHub screen. Mm -hmm. And. So it's it's in GitHub. Here's the location. And to install, you can do pip install. Uh, you can install as a user. So you do pip install minus minus user. And you can install it just to your user account. And there's preprint and then some basically this explanation of today here. The documentation. Yeah, and if you're interested, we can we can talk about it, and we can help set up, and and also it. And if you guys are interested in participating in the development of RF and adding more features and stuff, that's awesome. We can. We can uh, we can talk and we can work together on this. Thing. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, thank you very much, Apua, and everyone for joining us today. All right, thank you. Thank you very much.